Hey there everybody and welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We've got some new gameplay for you today, featuring some returning commanders. And you know what, let's just jump straight into it and see who's playing what. Up first is Justin playing his Yuriko deck. And as you can probably guess, this is a ninjutsu deck. He's trying to get as many free, cheap, or unblockable creatures onto the battlefield as possible so he can ninjutsu in Yuriko and use her ability. And speaking of her ability, he's got plenty of ways to stack the top of his library so he can get the maximum amount of life loss. He keeps his first seven of Verdant Catacombs, Mana Confluence, Trickery Charm, Drown in the Lock, Cyclonic Rift, Sensei's Defining Top, and Mem Knight. Up next is Ethan playing his Cambal deck. This deck focuses mainly on taxing your opponents while gaining a lot of life. It's got a lot of life gain synergy, and not to mention Heliod Ballista. Ethan keeps a starting hand of Swamp, Bloodstained Mire, Orzhov Signet, Grim Monolith, Sign and Blood, Ambition's Cost, and Necrologia. Up next is Cody and his favorite casual deck, Como the Cosmos Serpent. This deck's based around blue-green creatures and incurs a lot of value by itself and uses its commander as an inevitable finisher. And Cody decides to keep a starting hand of Snow Covered Forest, Waterlogged Grove, Simic Signet, Kinnon, Corsair of Crufix, Seedborn Muse, and a big ol' AC. And finally, we got Cameron playing the newest Akiri. It's an equipment deck. That's it. Haha, <laughs> Sunforger go brrrr. All jokes aside though, yes, it is an equipment deck, and Akiri can certainly become a Voltron commander, but he also plays a lot of other creatures that synergize well with equipments, so he can go either route if he wants to. And Cameron keeps a starting hand of Mountain, Plains, Command Tower, Arcane Signet, Haunted Cloak, Fervent Champion, and Stoneforge Mystic. Alright you guys, this is setting up to look like a pretty interesting game. Everybody's got plenty of lands and some ramp as well. Let's see what they do with it and get straight into the game. Looks like Cameron wins the die roll. He plays a command tower, casts Fervent Champion, rolls to see who he hits, and swings at Justin for one before passing to Cody. Cody plays a waterlogged grove and passes to Justin. Justin plays his mana confluence, casts a Mem Knight for free, and then takes one to his mana confluence and casts Sensei's Divining Top. Justin passes to Ethan, who plays a Bloodstained Mire, and passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a Mountain, and then casts Arcane Signet. Ethan responds by cracking his Bloodstained Mire, and lets Cameron continue as he searches. Cameron casts a Garda's Aid after that. Cameron then moves to combat, and swings one at Cody. Cameron then passes to Cody, who plays a Snow-Covered Forest, taps for two, and casts Simic Signet. Ethan also finally finds his Snowfield Sinkhole. Cody then passes to Justin. Justin plays his Verdict Catacombs, then cracks it to find a Swamp. He then casts Dark Confidant and passes to Ethan. Ethan plays an Exotic Orchard, taps for two, and casts his Grim Monolith before passing to Cameron. Cameron plays a Plains as Land for turn, then taps for two and casts Srong, which is a really good card draw engine for his deck. And to make things worse, he drops a Stoneforge Mystic. He finds a Dowsing Dagger and then moves to combat, swinging one at Cody. Cameron then passes to Cody, who taps for three, taking one to his land, and casts Corsair of Crufix. The top card of his library is unfortunately a Sakashima's Will, and so without making a land drop this turn, Cody passes to Justin. Justin reveals a Time Warp on the top of his library, and takes five to Bob. He then plays a Bloodstained Mire, and fetches and shocks a Watery Grave. Justin then moves to combat, swinging one at Ethan. After no blocks are declared, he then ninjutsus in Yuriko. Yuriko connects, and in response to the trigger, Justin pays one to Mana Confluence, and looks at the top three of his library with Sensei's Divining Top. After rearranging, he reveals Murderous Cut, and his opponents lose 5 life. He then recasts Mem Knight for free, and passes to Ethan. Ethan plays a Swamp as his land for turn, taps Grim Monolith for 3 to cast Orzhov Signet. He taps that, and a Swamp, to cast Cambal. After that, he taps for 2 to cast Sign and Blood, drawing 2 and losing 2. He then passes to Cameron. Cameron starts his turn off by casting Dowsing Dagger. Both Strom and Cambal trigger. And once the spell resolves, Sigarda's A triggers, and Cameron puts it on Fervent Champion and Cameron decides to give Cody the O2s with Defender. Cameron then moves to combat, swinging three first strike at Ethan, who gladly takes it, and Cameron transforms Dowsing Dagger into Lost Veil. Vale. And then in post-combat, Cameron plays Temple of Triumph, scrying one. He then casts Talisman of Conviction, and Kenball triggers again. He then passes to Cody. Cody draws and reveals a miscast on the top of his library. Poor guy just casts Kinnon, taking one to his land, and then passes to Justin. Justin reveals an ingenious infiltrator to Bob and loses 4 life. He then starts his turn off by casting Trickery Charm, giving Mem Knight flying. He then swings for 1 at Cameron in the air. Cameron responds by flashing in Haunted Cloak, Shram and Kembal triggers, and then he attaches it to Shram. 
No blocks are declared, so Justin ninjutsus in the Infiltrator. And it connects. Justin draws and then reveals fierce guardianship to Yuriko, and everyone loses three. Justin then plays an island and then recasts Memnite before passing to Ethan. Ethan casts a Thran Dynamo on his turn and then passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a Plains as a land for turn and then casts his commander, Akiri. After this, he equips Haunted Cloak to Fervent Champion, then moves to combat and swings Fervent Champion at Cody, who just blocks with a plant token and Cameron draws a card off of Akiri's ability. He then passes to Cody. Cody unfortunately reveals another non-land, this time a Sculptor of Winter on the top of his library. And I apologize for the glare on the cards. This is a little bit older of a recording before we knew where to put our lights. And trying not to fall behind too much on mana, Cody casts Sakashima, copying Kinnon, so that that Simic Signet can tap for four. Cody then passes to Justin, who activates Tomp on his end step. He looks at the top three and puts them back in any order. On his turn, Justin reveals Dispel with Bob and loses one life, then draws his card. He then moves straight to combat, swinging his Infiltrator and Yuriko at Ethan. Before blocks can be declared, Cameron flashes in Timely Ward, targeting Akiri, and Camball triggers. Ethan then moves to blocks, and blocks the Infiltrator. Damage goes through, but before Yuriko's trigger resolves, Justin decides to check the top three with top just in case, uh, but leaves the same one on top. He reveals a dig through time, and everyone takes eight. Justin then moves to instep and has to discard two cards before passing to Ethan. And Ethan thought it would be a little bit fun and quirky to drop a bull assisted L on his turn. But Justin is on the case and Fierce Guardian ships it. Uh, he does lose two and Ethan does gain two though. Ethan then plays a Prismatic Vista and then casts Thrall Parasite. Ethan then passes to Cameron. Cameron plays an Inventor's Fair as land for turn and then immediately sacrifices it to search for an artifact. He finds a Sunforger to his hand. He then activates Stoneforge Mystic to put it onto the battlefield. Cameron then attaches it to Akiri with Sigarda's aid. He then moves to combat, swinging 7 commander at Justin, and then the 1 at Cody. In response to Akiri's draw trigger, Justin flashes in a hole breacher. Before the draw trigger resolves, Cameron unattaches Sunforger to go get swords to plowshares, and plows the hole breacher. Cody obviously blocks with an O2 plant, and since Justin gained 3 life, he'll just take the 3 commander damage. And after this, Fervent Champion gets a free Sunforger equip, and then after checking his mana, he passes to Cody. Cody starts his turn and reveals, freed from the real, another non-land. This poor guy. My man is straight up not having a good time, and I wouldn't either. Cody then casts Sculptor of Winter, and then with the leftover mana from the Simic Signet, he sacrifices his Waterlogged Grove and draws a card. Unfortunately, because of the glare, and nobody said the card's name during the game, I do not know what's on top. Cody then passes to Justin, who reveals an exotic orchard to Bob, taking no life. He then plays it as land for turn. He then decides it's time to cast that time warp that he got. But Cody is not having any force of negations it, exiling Sakashima's will. Kanbal triggers for both of these spells. And since he can't really comfortably attack, Justin decides to just pass to Ethan. Ethan starts his turn off by cycling a bearing more. And wanting to dig even further, he casts an Ambition's Cost. He plays a Plains after this, and then taps her too, and casts an Arcane Signet. And in response to the Extort trigger, he fetches with Prismatic Vista to find a Swamp and pay for it. Everybody loses one, and he gains three. Ethan passes to Cameron as he shuffles, and Cameron flashes in Black Blade Reforged. And Sigarda's aids it to Akiri. Now on his turn, Cameron plays a Plains as his land for turn, and then equips Haunted Cloak to Akiri. He then moves to combat and swings an 11-11 Vigilance Trample and Haste Akiri at Justin. I don't know why he tapped Akiri though, when it has Vigilance. But aside from that, he also decides to send a 5-1 First Strike at Ethan, and Cameron draws off Akiri's ability. Justin drops Memnite and Dark Confidant under the bus, and Ethan declares no blockers. In response, Cameron de-attaches Sunforger to go find Boros Charm and give Akiri Double Strike, absolutely murdering Justin. And then post-combat, Cameron re-equips Sunforger to Fervent Champion. God, that card's busted. And then after that, he casts Keeper of the Accord before passing to Cody. And Cody reveals a negate on the top of his library. With nothing really to do, he just passes to Ethan. And on his end step, Ethan casts Vampiric Tutor and extorts it. And in response to the tutor, Cameron unattaches Sunforger and finds Tybalt's Trickery, countering it. Ethan mills the top three cards of his library, and then flips over cards till he hits a non-land card. That non-land card is Karlov of the Ghost Council. And still on instep, Cameron also gets a 1-1 to Keeper of the Accord. And now it's Ethan's turn. And Ethan gets very giddy, as he taps for 10 mana and drops a Walking Ballista X is equal to 5. 
After it resolves, Ethan then slowly and methodically removes one counter at a time and kills Cameron. Cody decides to take one more turn to see where it gets him, and with yet another non-land on the top of his library, he just concedes. Well, here we are at the end of the video, what you guys think? The person in the driver's seat sure did flip-flop a lot, it went from Justin to Cameron and then Ethan snuck out the win, because Camball slowly, yet surely, ate away at everybody's life total. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to leave a comment down below. We love hearing feedback from you guys. And be sure to check us out on social media, links will be down below. And get excited for the next few videos, because we will be trying a new setup, so hopefully it looks a little better. As always everybody, have a smooth day.